Hello and welcome to another Max Chroma video. In this video, we're going to be going over some more instructions on how to use the Max Chroma Photo Tessellator 2022 Action Update to version 1.8. This is a paid product available on my payhip.com slash Max Chroma web store, and that's this $50 Max Chroma Photo Tessellator. If you already purchased the product, you get the upgrades for free for the entire life of the product. So I'm just going to be going over, in the previous video I showed how to install the actions and the patterns and the halftone color blender, and I've shown how it can work in the previous versions of Photoshop CS6 and CC. I'll go over that in some other videos actually using this in those versions. There's just a few differences to how the actions work. But in this video, we're going to continue on. I've already shown some things about the first section of actions, the HCWB enhancements, the menu shortcuts section, generate pattern layers, fast photo filter, the fast index to layers. You can also just take an image and run it directly into index mode if you want to using this. And then I started showing some of the custom color modes like the one custom color pull, the two custom color pull, the two custom color blend that basically blends the entire image into just two colors. And then I started showing some of the custom color interlocks. We're going to continue on with some more showing you how these work in this video, and then we'll get on to some of the other modes. I might save it for future videos. I don't want these videos to really be too long, even though they are instructional videos about how to use this product. So I'm going to just continue on with some more test images, and we're going to look at all sorts of fun artwork and different stuff that would tend to be maybe challenging to extract into custom colors in some other ways. So let me maybe start with something like this. And this is like an image that, you know, it, it's something that I got from a stock Adobe stock site, and it is a vector file. I think I'll start showing some videos of vector files in Adobe Illustrator. I have a lot of these test patterns that I create where I do them in Illustrator so I can convert them into all sorts of custom colors and try all sorts of tests to see how to separate that stuff. So the thing about working in vector is you have to deal with all of these different shapes and pieces and all of the colors that they're set to. And sometimes I prefer to just flatten everything into a raster and then convert it into a few custom colors as a separation or convert it into halftones just as an effect. So working in Photoshop on something like this, the way I look at it is it's now just converted all into one two-dimensional flat layer. And I don't have to deal with like a three-dimensional stack of objects that have all sorts of different settings. You got to click on all these objects, change their transparencies, change some of the colors around. It's actually very difficult to work in vector when you've got a lot of complexity like this and to just convert it all down to a few colors. There's some tricks to do that in Adobe Illustrator, but this technique I like to do with the photo tessellator is all about converting it into a few colors and going into halftones. So let's just kind of start off with this one, looking at it under the three custom color interlock. Um, or maybe we'll start with just the fast photo tessellator and you can see how you could preview it in a few different colors like two, three, four, five, but we could also just run a specific number using these custom color interlocks. Let's start off with just the fast photo filter and the photo tessellator sharp. And we're going to let this go to 600 dpi, so we get a higher resolution halftone dot. And I'm going to let it just be the round dots at the 19% scale. That gives me about a 50 LPI dot. And I want it to be this 22 and a half degree angle. And one of the things I might have forgotten to do was check the size of the image first. You really want to be sure you're at the size you're going to be printing it at. We'll just take a look after. I think it's kind of right. We'll, we'll just take a look. You want to be sure of that first. Um, so let's just look at this now. We're seeing it under the local adaptive palette. You could do local perceptual, selective, or adaptive when you're just having it try to pick the colors automatically here. And so, you know, I don't think there's much difference between perceptual. Selective can sometimes have a lot of differences in how it appears. Doesn't seem to be much difference happening there. And the adaptive, it's really not a lot of change with this one. So let's just keep it on perceptual and see what we get. When we go down to just two colors, you can see it's picking these two. Now I can change that. So let me uncheck the preview, click on this palette, go down to custom, and then I can change what colors it's using. So I could decide that I want to ignore the background maybe. I could just get rid of that later. I can click on this and maybe choose like the red. I want to maybe pick uh, 
that and then I can click on this and maybe choose the yellow or gold color hit preview and see what that looks like it's kind of forced all of the background to blend in with the red in the heart so you'd have to go through and delete the background later maybe we could do one that's a little bit darker like this color here hit preview it's still kind of forcing some of those colors into the same now it's making the background that color but not really having so it's almost like not enough colors we got to consider the background color sometimes and we'll just say we would eliminate it later you might be putting it on that background for if you're printing this you'd be putting it on a shirt that's maybe that background color but you got to include it in this mode so that it sort of sets it up as a different color let's just try this there so that's basically a two color version with the third color being the background you know so even this you could just hit OK and then we could go into image mode color table or use the actions here in the menu shortcuts edit color table and I can convert this into a separation or a positive that could be put out as screens or I can just do edit undo color table and I put these actions in here this would be three color index to layers so the background this and that let's try that three color index to layers and we'll just hit this enter on that let it go through and I'll show you guys um, one of the reasons I'm doing this index to layers thing is we can turn off the merged composite we can turn off the color right here get rid of that background maybe let's bring this up and uh, set the background maybe I need to look at the original and just set that background color it's not really the original it's the one that has been index converted and then we have this color and this color and if I were just to control click on this layer and then control plus shift there's a little plus sign in there click on that layer I selected both of these layers I can just go and now create a new solid color fill set that to white just like this and now I've got a white base for this print I would want to just go into this control select here and I want to actually just delete it one of the ways I like to work is um, using the fill color so what we want to do is actually fill it that's shift F5 or you can go here and do a few things like hit X to reverse the swatches so black is the background color and then I could do control backspace that fills it with black but I want you to see exactly what I'm doing I'm control selecting these dots then I'm gonna go edit fill with black ink set to normal mode 100 percent and I want to be selected on that mask layer so I've got the selection again and maybe I'll go through this differently to show you because one of the things you want to do for an underbase is to choke it back a couple of pixels so when you print it you don't get white peeking out around the whole design so maybe I'll do select modify contract by about two pixels or so two or three could work remember it's half tones, so you don't want to cut back too much on all the half tones. maybe let's just do select modify contract by two pixels and then I'm going to fill on that mask layer with white we'll do edit fill with white okay and then there's this under base that now has the color overlapping it okay so it overlaps the under base just like so now one of the things I want to do is maybe show that again in a little easier way if you know you're going to be cutting the under base back let's just delete that layer we've got color three color two I can just control select color two, control plus select color three, and then go select modify contract and do it before I make the layer. Let's do contract by two pixels, and then we'll create this new solid layer of white. Okay, so there's the uh, two colors over background shirt color, making this, you know, it's a converting the arts, changing the artwork. You need to understand when you're doing some of these things, if you're not trying to reproduce every color exactly, with like a more full color method or a simulated process method you're going to be making an interpretation of the design and you need to show that the whole point of this is you can quickly make a mock-up for the customer a full color halftone converted mock-up it's like a proof file but you're showing it to them in the halftones of the colors you're going to use the point I think that helps the best is you can quickly take any design 
and let's say go to this version of it where you show it in a few different colors and if you can get someone to approve that they like how that looks in those colors even though it's become an interpretation of the design it's a little bit different artistically you know you can just print that and you don't have to really struggle to get everything exactly as it is you're you're letting them know that this is a screen printed version things are changing but they have control over the colors of those two colors so you could quickly show them like this you know two color over a background version um three colors over the background you would save each of these files and just proof it to them and let them pick which one they like and then you know that if you can you, know, you still need to make sure you can print this correctly that you can expose halftones on screens and convert this into a screen print that comes out like this and you got to control some of the variables in that process this program is really creating the graphics effect that is the starting point for using all these other things and bringing them to films and screens and printing the inks through those screens but i want to get into that stuff i have an entire screen print shop set up to do this and show you guys these videos of how to print this stuff so it's not just about what i'm doing on the computer here but you could quickly show a client these different variations the five color variation now bringing in that color and again you can control uncheck the preview click on the palette go to custom and control what those colors are so i could click this one and maybe i want it to be more of this darker color hit okay click this and choose that background color maybe this one will be like the green but a lot of times when you're going through the fast photo filter it's put this halftone effect over everything and you need to be careful about what you're selecting and whether or not it's going to convert it that accurately so we just hit okay and click on this one too maybe i'll set that here okay so you know it's all about whether you think this is a good interpretation of the design if it's your own artwork you can really choose how you want to do it and bringing it down to a few colors there are ways to reproduce this in full color but it's actually a lot more challenging to achieve that when you go to the screens and you go to um, putting it on press getting the films and the screens to all expose correctly is more difficult using the custom colors means like this red is pretty much all solid in most of these areas and the ink color you put in the screen will definitely be that color when you print it you know depending on some other variables but it's still going to be the color you put into the screen rather than being blended out of a bunch of other colors you're risking that the blends don't come out right so now you're just controlling a lot more areas to be a solid version of a certain color and let's just hit okay on this this is a five color version and you want to be careful that background actually put some dots in there based on the color that i picked so i could undo and then go back to the index mode right here and try it again i would click previous and i would uncheck the preview i would go here click custom and one of the things you can do if you're using the eyedropper directly let me get rid of this pixel grid if you're using the eyedropper directly you could click this color and make sure i pick the one that's in between the lighter dot and the darker dot or when you're selecting you can click on this and then change the point sample size area to like 11 by 11 or 31 by 31 average now that's going to pretty much be the same color everywhere i pick even if i click on the darker one the lighter one you can see it's staying the same it's like an average of the whole area as long as i pick the pixel that is the average between these two dots it should force those to be one color you uncheck it just try to get it again although i think what's happening is i've got a darker color in the art that's it's sim too, too much similar to that one so it's take, taking over right there so let me click on this we'll set this to be like a little closer to the darker color and then i think i want to take yeah that's also what happened i probably selected here and i picked something too close to that let me just go and select maybe i want more of this brown so let's actually click it a little bit lighter here so we made this color a little more brown and this color a little darker. Let's preview. Oh, I got to hit OK and then preview. There we go. That, that made the background solid and then we got the brown here. That's not bad. You might want to pick this line as one of your colors instead of that brown. But the thing that's happening is when we got the halftone pattern over everything, it's sort of making it a little more, bit more difficult to select exactly what the colors are in the design. So that's why I'm going to go to the custom color one and show you how that works. So let's click that color hit okay and see 
Yeah, it makes the line solid, but now it's put that into that area because there's dots all over it. So this is a good example to show you why you might go to the custom color interlocking method instead of the fast photo filter. So let's cancel that. We want to be sure when we hit cancel, if any of these buttons show up as red, we click here, go to button mode, and then find that action. It's basically had a little arrow that opens up the action. We want to just close that. Go back to button mode here. So let's close this. And let's take this into the custom color interlocks. So let's start with maybe a four custom color interlock. So this one brings up the index mode without converting the art to halftones first. Now you can see some of the difficulty with dealing with this art is it sees exactly the amount of colors that are in this design because there's no anti-aliasing. If there's under 256 colors in the design and they're all solid colors like this, it's going to see them first and say, do you want to just do an exact conversion? But if you try to convert this exactly, you're going to have 75 different colors to figure out what to do with. So we're going to just uncheck preview and we're going to click here and we're going to do local perceptual. You want to make sure you do this when using these buttons because I need to stick to four colors. I've clicked on this one as a four custom color interlock. I have to stay with four when doing it this way. But now I can go in and turn on preview, see what four colors it's picking automatically. It looks pretty good, actually. It's just that it's using the darker background color to maybe, it's like actually it's mixing a couple colors that shouldn't be. So let's uncheck preview, and then let's go to the custom, and let's really select the colors directly. So we'll click on this one. That's just that background color. And then I want to maybe use, we could try using this outline as one of the colors, but I might run out of some other colors. So maybe we will use the red here and the gold here, or maybe the gold like right there. And then I could decide if I want this green in the artwork, maybe I'll use this lighter green here. And we'll hit OK and hit Preview and see what we get. And again, you could actually convert this into solid colors. You don't have to use the diffusion, but when you're going to just solid spot colors, you really don't got to go through all this stuff. You can just use the index mode in Photoshop the way it is. Just go nothing with the diffusion, no dithering. And this is just a solid spot color conversion. So, but you know, that stuff's just, you can already do that in Photoshop directly. You don't need the action set to do that for you. So going to diffusion, you're actually using this index mode in high resolution and in the high resolution, it's actually converting these to all the different pixels of color that would blend together to make this happen. So what we're doing is letting it convert at high resolution, and then we're going to turn them into other colors, but this all happens automatically in the action so that they can interlock and convert back to these colors. Okay, so on this four color one, I'm kind of stuck between do I use the background color as a color or do I get rid of it later maybe? And I think that might be an easier thing to show you is deal with the background later in this version. And for right now, I'm going to let the background become one of the other colors. So let me uncheck the preview. Let me go back to the custom palette. And instead of the green background, I'm going to uh, select this color, this outline color. And I'll hit OK and, let, and then preview it again. OK. So it's turned the background into a mixture of two of the colors. You know, it's, it's basically trying to blend that background for what it should be still. It's a little bit green, it's not dark like this. So it's trying to use the lighter green in this color to make that simulation of it. But we would kind of ignore all that. We'll just delete it later. We'll have an easy selection to make from the background and we can just knock it out later um, instead of having to use one of the colors in the design as the background. So let's just hit OK and let it run. Now, this action I developed to take advantage of the index mode, go into high resolution, convert everything down so that it's more like a regular type of uh, mixed separation, but then I change the colors to something that I know will interlock together through another separation process. It's like that. You saw it just for a second, right? So putting it in those colors, I essentially bring it into, um, I, think, I think it actually goes to more like black, uh, white and red and yellow. And, and that's just all based on my research and developments over the years and in creating interlocking halftones out of artwork and images. So once I convert it from the index into those colors, 
I go through and process it again with the halftone pattern, and then I extract it to the different layers, and it um, goes through and pulls the color that you actually had set and puts it in that layer and sets it to that color. The old version of this action didn't do that part. Now I get to pick the resolution, just hit OK. I'll, I'll stick with 600, it runs kind of faster. And then I'll leave this at the 19% scale dot. Or actually, I kind of want to do something fun in here. I'm going to set it to my triangle halftones, but these are very large scale, so you've got to set it down and see, like, maybe it'd be about 3%. You know, I can actually uh, zoom in and almost see, like, what I'd be getting in a comparison of size. So, like, looking at, like, this little area here, if I was on the round dots, and I'll come up with a scale percentage that matches the LPIs accordingly. This 19% was like a 50 LPI dot. You can see how small the dots are there. So if I go to the triangles, I maybe want to keep it within this area of the triangles. So let's change it to those triangles, and we'll change it to like maybe 2% or 3%. We'll, we'll, we'll just go to 2 and let that process. Hit OK. The angle for the triangle dots is you got to be careful. These triangles have three angles in them. You don't want one of the angles to fall on a mesh thread if you're actually going to be screen printing it. So there's a 90 degree angle here, and the other two are 60, and um, the uh, I think it's like 120 is the other angle. So I could maybe do uh, 15 degrees. That might make one of them become um, 75. The other one would become 135. So we could just try 15 degrees. You want to hit Enter on that once, and I want to make sure I hit 15 on that again. So this is cool. It's going to convert it into the triangle halftones, interlocking together with those custom colors. And then once it's done, I can go through and actually remove that background like I was telling you about. OK, so that's done. And it creates this um, index version right here I can use. But I can turn that off. Click on this layer right here, and using the magic wand, I could actually select. Uh, I don't have to do non-contiguous, um, or I don't have to do contiguous. I could just keep that on. No anti-aliasing, 10. It doesn't really matter. I would actually want to do zero tolerance. And then I'll click on this. And so now it's selecting all of the background. Okay, And I can now turn off that layer. And I can go to one of the other layers, like this green. It actually has a bunch of stuff in there, like those dots that are in the background here. So I want to go to this green, having this selection. I'm going to actually fill that with white. OK. And then I want to go and do the same on each of those, probably. And on this one, we would just delete from that layer. OK, and then we don't need that background color anymore like this. And we could set the background layer, white background, to this color of the background from the original. Click on this, change it to that, turn off the original. And we just need to make sure we underbase all of these colors now. They're basically blending over the original artwork as if they are like an ink or a dye that doesn't have any opacity to it. You could sort of change that by clicking here and maybe using the one that is the interlock for selection. So I could uh, turn this off right here, select the interlock for selection. I don't even really need to select it. I could go here and just hold Alt and tie those two colors together. Same with this one. I can bring up the interlock for selection, hold Alt and connect those together, turn off this, bring up the interlock for selection, hold Alt. And then each of these don't need to be set with the group to a linear burn. These can now be set to a normal mode. Each of these groups can be normal. And that would be showing it as if they were totally opaque inks. But you know, sometimes I like to see it in the other way and just create the underbase manually. So let's undo all that. Keep going. OK. So let's turn on those layers again. And this is the reason I made these interlocks for selections. So I could actually quickly just Control select this one, Control plus select that one, Control plus select this. And then I'll do that select modify, contract by about two pixels. 
and then I'm going to go over the white background with a new solid color fill set to white. And now I can see how this looks over the underbase where these are sort of trapped around it. You see, you actually see the choking amount and it wouldn't be that dark. You would have some opacity to this ink, but it kind of shows you, I'm going to move this whole layer. Okay. So you can see that here's the red color over that background. If it was just a dye or like a water-based ink, it might not show up. It might just turn darker. Um, but it's really going to look maybe lighter than that, but it shows you where you're overlapping. You don't want to have the base showing. You want to have the base cut back a little bit so that this overlaps it. Okay. And then we can generate a new merged composite layer and see that it's really too dark, I think, in some of those areas and how it blends, but that stuff comes down to a lot of the opacities of these layers and how they work over the background. So, you know, maybe I could even make a further update later in another version where maybe I just connect these and get rid of these two layers, make it a little bit easier to have the opacity set. But uh, I want to stick with how this version works for now. And it's mostly, again, a graphical effect. And or it's, like, it's like a graphics effect that you're then using to do screen printing, if that's your purpose behind it. But I, there's no way for me to guarantee that all of this is going to work for you unless you know what you're doing in the screen printing process, how you're making the films and the screens, putting the inks in and printing it. But this gives you the advantage of not having to know all of that background and color separation and graphics, graphic design, working in programs like Photoshop to try to extract all those colors, convert them into these half tones. It basically speeds up that whole process for you. So I'm going to connect those two together, set this more to a normal blend mode. Bring this one up here, turn off those two layers, alt click that, click this and set it to normal. Turn this off, bring that up here, alt click that one, set this to normal. And then you can see more of how these would maybe blend when the inks are more opaque, blending together, going over that, that base in the background. In order to simulate the actual opacity of the ink, it's not as easy. You really got to set up another layer of this with like a white behind it and then change this blending mode a bit. If I just change the opacity of this layer, it simulates that there's an overlap going on here. Now you can kind of see the overlap, but it's made this faded and that really wouldn't happen when you print the ink color through the screen like that. But basically we got this converted. Let's go ahead and make a new merged composite layer. We can just see that artwork in the three colors, right? It's it's not four, it's, it's a base would be one of your screens, white ink, and then there's this color, the green, this gold color, and then this red color. So let's just close that and do this again with a five color, five custom color interlock. And then I could just pick, put the background screen in there maybe. Um, or I just wanna keep five colors as the colors I use and delete the background after. The thing you don't want to do is get rid of the background and have it be transparent. These actions are not meant to work with a transparent background. You're meant to deal with the transparently the transparency separately. And I'll get into all that stuff in some more videos. So let's go to local perceptual. Let's keep it on five. Let's uncheck the preview. Turn it on again, but we would really want to select some different colors maybe. It's kind of picking them okay, but let me turn that off and then click here, go to custom. Let's do the background color. This color, I might change this to the brown. Now I'll just, I'll keep that outline. You know, it's up, it's up to me, I guess, with this artwork, but you'd have to consider the client that you're dealing with, or if this is art, you could really choose your own art. You could choose what you want to do with it. So let's select that color for the outline. And we'll do this green here. You could pick whichever one you want, really. I could pick this one and then it's gonna blend this in these areas with some other colors here. I might start to use some of the gold to do that one. But I think I wanna keep this lighter green as the color. Maybe I'll, I'll select this middle one right here. And then the gold, I think I'll select this one. And we have the red already picked. So let's hit okay, hit preview. That's not bad. You can see how it changed a little bit. That's, that's kind of nice. You can see it almost forced, it, it did put some of the yellow into that area. Like I was saying, this part becomes the solid. This one starts to blend with the other darker colors. This blends with the lighter color. 
and you can zoom in and kind of see what is going to happen in the halftones. But let me just hit OK and let this run through with the five colors. And sometimes there'll be like stray pixels that show up in areas where you don't want it to be. You could change that diffusion percentage to like 95% or 90% and sort of um, compress it in just a little bit so that you don't get pixels in areas you didn't want. Like if I didn't want those yellow pixels to show up in the lighter area, I could probably set it to about 95% diffusion and it would just get rid of those. And so this process is going through and it's uh, basically changing it out to the different colors, it's converting them into where they can be interlocked out of those, uh, the five custom color, the reason that the buttons for the interlocking go three custom color, four custom color, and five custom color interlock, and then with six, seven, and eight, they become rosettes. They're not going to interlock anymore. That's actually more to do with the science of colors and how they interlock and create additional colors and how you can get this to process to happen through the techniques I'm doing in the actions. And it's kind of something where I would need to write the code more directly in order to make it function as six, seven, eight colors all interlocking together. And at certain points with the, num with the kind of colors you've got in a design, Sometimes you really don't need more than four or five of them to all interlock together to make another color. You could just have different areas interlocking. Like you, you would maybe have uh, three colors interlocking in one area, another three colors interlocking in a different area, but it wouldn't be like eight colors all mixing together. Um, so there's some stuff about color science that gets into why you don't even need that many to interlock, but it is something I'm working on in the future. So again, I've got this one, I'm just going to let it do 600 DPI and these things that are stopping and asking me these questions, I can change this stuff in the actions. There's a whole set of customizable settings at the bottom of the action set and I can choose that I just want it to always default to 600 DPI and not stop. I could choose I want it to default to 1200 and not stop and ask me. If I know I always want to use the round dot or the elliptical dot, let's say, and I want it at a certain scale for that 600 DPI, 19% would make a 50 LPI dot. And let's say I even know that I want to use the angle of 22 and a half all the time. There's a way to just set that, and I'll, I'll actually do that in a second. We'll go back over that and I'll show you. So let's just hit OK on this. Now the five color one, you want to be careful because it's going to do this special secondary angle in order to interlock the fifth color. You'll keep the 67.5 if you did 22.5. If you did zero degrees, you would want to make sure you do 45 degrees for the next time that it pops up. But again, I can just let that be default and I don't have to choose that each time. So it's going through with the actions. It's going to finish now doing the half tones, and it's going to merge the fifth color together or it's going to, it's going to convert all five colors. And you'll see some interesting patterns like these rosette patterns, because once the fifth color is in there, it's now interlocking all the colors together. So it's, it's that special five color interlock that creates the little rosette patterns. And that's why there's that other angle so I could get them to all work together. And that's kind of like when you're doing a, um, an interlock between black, red, yellow, and white, the fifth color is actually a transparency. So um, that's it's like the technique that's used to, to create this. So again, this is all set and ready to go. If you wanted to create an under base, you could just go through and add those in on another layer. Uh, this one doesn't have these split out with the additional color selections. Um, I might add that in another action, in another update to the actions, just so it'd be easier to select. But it's, it's honestly not that hard. Like if you take all of these layers together, and you know, I wouldn't have the background in there maybe, we would have the background color separate. We may, might not underbase this darker outline color, but I could take these three colors, hold Alt and drag them down to here, and then uh, group them. Make sure they're not underneath this group. They're right above the background. And let me like turn off this and this and this, turn it all off there. And we're gonna click on each of these layers and set them to linear burn so they all blend together. It's just the top two I'm going to do that to. Okay, so these two are set to linear burn. This now merges all those colors together. I can keep this group 
um, I will actually change this. So I'm going to add an invert above it. So now I invert all these. I'm looking at it with white over a black background. And then I'm going to take this layer and set it to screen. And we want to change the background color now. And if I want to use the original, so I'm going to select this, change it to that color, turn off the original. Now I've got the background color with this white base, okay, um, showing up in a screen blend mode over the background. Then I can put in things like the outline color and this green color, this gold, and this red. And the only thing I might want to do is the outline color is showing up very dark because that's blending over the background. So I could pick this and maybe change it to multiply uh, or darken. You could change the blending mode to sort of simulate that it's not actually going to, um, like it's not going to blend in that darker. When it's set to linear burn, it almost turns black because it's like this dark color. If it was just a dye going over this other color, you wouldn't see it anymore. It's just totally transparent. So the darken mode can kind of help that show up a little bit better. And that's just because I wasn't underbasing this outline. And you might want to be careful where there's half tones. If you don't put this on top as a as the layer, if you don't like put this one last, I can drag it up here and kind of simulate that it's above the others. If you didn't put it last and you printed this red over that base, you could end up with a little bit of base showing up and this um, other color wouldn't like cover it up totally. But let me undo because I moved that stuff all around. Okay, so anyway, here's the one where it's all converted over a base. And I can just get rid of this. I could call this the base. And it's so it's just this uh, one, two, three, four colors over a base, over the fifth color being the background shirt color. And I can scroll up here and say new merged composite layer and see that whole preview, what that preview looks like. And again, that's an elliptical dot and it has a fifth color interlocking with it. So five colors interlocking from this art. And you know, I didn't have to go through any like trying to select each of these colors independently and get them all to blend together with like uh, the color range tool. Some of that stuff is almost impossible to do. You're not gonna get all of the colors to mix with each other. So let's just close this and we'll look at it one more time. I'm gonna change this from button mode. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and show you how these settings work. First, we have master image size. You open this button, you, you open the action. You can see I've got image size 300 DPI, 600 DPI, and 1200 DPI. Look at the left-hand side with the check marks, and you can see I've got the check mark only on the 600 DPI setting. So I could uncheck that, make sure I check the 1200 DPI setting, and then this dialog right here, it doesn't matter if it's on on that one, it matters whatever one you're on, Clicking this means it's going to stop and ask me if I really want 1200. Well, if I know that I want 1200 all the time, I can just uncheck that. Let's close this button. Go to this next action, the custom pattern layer set. Here's where I can open this up and I can decide that I want you just look at these ones. I've got the different sizes set up. So we've got one with 10% scale, 19% scale, and 38% scale. The 19% would work for the 600 DPI, but since I'm going to 1200 DPI, I would actually use 38%. So I'm gonna check the checkbox right here, uncheck that checkbox, uncheck that dialog, and I don't want the dialog to show up when it goes to 38%. 38% is gonna make a 50 LPI dot at 1200 DPI resolution. Let's close that pattern layer set. And if I wanted to use the ellipse, and that's where I'll show you guys how to add in more custom options if you want to use the other um, different dot patterns and have them be defaulting to those dot patterns. But I've got one set up already for the ellipse. So I would actually want to change that. If I want to use the ellipse, this was going to be a little bit of a different thing, and I really don't recommend doing it unless you really know after following these videos that that's what you want every time. What I would actually do is close that one. It doesn't matter if it's checked or not. Let me look at the uh, custom layer set ellipse. And we'll go in and we'll see that we got the ellipse set with 19%. I don't want to use that one. I want to use the one that's 38%. Check the check. And what we're going to do to trick the action to use the elliptical halftones as default is we're going to take this 
right here. And we're going to make sure we rename this. So this, this is, you got to be very careful. You're, you're going to do this stuff. I'm going to get rid of the ellipse on this. So it just says custom pattern layer set. And then on this one, I'm going to double click and change that to say round. That way I remember that that one is the round dot. And now this one's the ellipse, but now by setting it to the custom pattern layer set, it's going to use this action as my default. So now I've got the ellipses set up as the default action. Going to the master rotation angles. So for the 22 and a half degree angles, I just don't want to have the dialog asking me about it. But I want to keep the check that it's going to do all these, okay? So we'll just look at it that way. So now there's no more dialogues in here, and it's not going to stop and ask me any questions. It's going to go at 1200 DPI. It's going to choose and use the custom pattern layer set one and that I've renamed to not have the word ellipse in it. It won't be able to use the round one now. It's going to go right to this one and it's going to be choosing the 38% elliptical dot pattern, elliptical halftone. And so I'm just showing you, this is a little bit of advanced stuff, but I'm showing you how to preset the defaults so that you don't have to change them and pick what you want every time. So now if I go into the custom color modes, and let's change this back to button mode, and we'll move this over. Now if I do five custom color interlock, the only thing that it's going to stop and ask me is picking the colors. So let's just go through and we'll keep the one that we had before. And so we don't want to do exact 75, but we can click on this and I think we can do previous and it will actually get the five colors I had last time. To double check that, I'll change from previous now to custom and I can see those colors are set. And it's because the preview was on when I went to previous. So let's just go to custom, see that we've got those set, hit OK. Turn the preview on. And then like that thing I was showing you about the diffusion, like see these little stray pixels that are showing up in here? If I change the diffusion to maybe like 95%, it may get rid of some of those. Actually, it added more into that one because it's sort of like pushing it to be more yellow. Okay, so it's compressing it. It's actually adding more to one and getting rid of some of the others. It's going to take things that were like those colors and it'll try to prevent stuff from showing up in them, like this one right here. And then you got some of this mixing in. But you know, you're kind of de deciding whether you want it to be more like a spot color design. So 50% might actually force more of the yellow in some areas. But you can really see there's a difference there. Once I went to 50, it got rid of it, but it also got rid of some of the other blends taking place. So it's compressing it a bit. We could, we could really change the diffusion amount to whatever we want. 80% puts more of that yellow in. 90% um, is going to have it in there too. But it kind of captures more of these other blends. Maybe we'll just stick with like 98% or something. So it just gets rid of a few stray pixels and doesn't really change stuff that much. Okay. Again, I'm just trying to give you guys the instructions on how to use all this stuff and teach exactly how it all works. So now when I hit OK on that, it's going to go through all of those actions like it did before the first time around. But this time, really what's happening is that you've got none of those actions stopping to ask me if I want the 1200 DPI or the uh, what size dot to do, um, the scale percentage of the dot or even the type of dot, but I forced it to use the elliptical dot by changing the name of that action. You just want to be very careful if you do that. You could break the action set if you misname one of those actions and it doesn't have the custom pattern layer set action when it looks for running that. But I'm just showing you guys how you can now, with the 1.8 update, actually dial this in to your own settings and customize it for your own purposes and then have it like not stopping every time. And then you could run through and even do like a batch process on a whole bunch of images and just have them all automatically converting into halftone separations. Maybe you want to send out a bunch of proofs of some different designs and have people pick if they want the two, three, four color design, etc. And we're just going to you know, let this finish through. I'm showing you guys that, you know, even at 1200 DPI, now I've got a system with a six core processor. It's a, it's, it's a machine from about 2017. It's got a six core processor. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and it has a uh, basic Radeon 550 
FX, or it's like a Radeon 550X card, graphics card. Um, so, you know, depending on the size of the image, this one was only 10 inches wide. If you had an image that was like 15 inches wide, 20 inches tall, you're going at 1200 DPI, the, it might take a while to process everything. You got to be aware of all the different stuff that's happening with these high resolution conversions. And this is some very advanced stuff that's taking place with these actions. Okay, so that's finished. So it didn't have to stop and ask me anything. It just went through doing the elliptical dots, doing the five color interlock, going through and creating all the different variations of blends, how those colors would work together. And again, this isn't something that uh, is perfect. It's If you went through and tried to manually separate it, you might have ways to extract these colors a little better, do things where it doesn't blur the image slightly and, and create too many little um, anti-aliasing issues with like text. It might make some of the text not as clean. But honestly, when you go to putting things on films and screens and printing it, that stuff doesn't matter as much as all the colors working together accurately matters. Okay, so there I've got all these images. There's like the background color. Essentially, when we're looking at this, if I turn off this layer, this layer, this one, and this one, it already looks like there's a base here because this custom color is going over the background of white. So I can just kind of look at it that way. And if I wanted to, maybe I would just take this one. It was the background. So honestly, I can just select this layer right here, control I to invert the layer. Um, I don't even need to do that. Let's just undo. We'll turn off this color and we'll just change the blending mode to screen mode. And we'll change the background color to, to that. So we'll change this to this. Turn that off. And now I've got the white over that background color. I don't need that color layer in there. This is the white base now. And we can look at all of these on over the background. And we might want to just change this. One. Well, it's actually underbasing this one right now. So it depends on whether you want to underbase that dark color or not. Um, you could pretty easily knock it out from the base. I would just drag this, hold Alt, and drag this down to this layer. And then set it to linear burn. And it's going to knock it out from there. Let me turn that off. There we go. So it's knocked out. You can have it on or knock that color out. And it all works a lot easier because these are the exact halftones. So let's un let's keep that one the way it is. Turn that layer on, this layer, this one, and this one. And then maybe this one, I'll set the blending mode to just darken instead of uh, like having it get way too dark over the background color. And then we can go up here and do the new merged composite layer and get that final proof. So it's pretty cool, it just goes through automatically. Let me undo this one, let's close that one. Okay, so again, I wanna show you now, let's just reset this back to what it was, or if something screws up with the action, just don't save the action file. Let's just close the action, or we'll just delete the action out of the actions panel. I'll go back right here, go to the actions files, go to this user mode action, full stops, or, you know, there's one that's fully automatic and it doesn't have any stops. The only time it stops is ask you for those colors you want to select. But that one is going to be set to the round dots at like the 50 LPI with maybe 600 DPI. You can still choose which settings are going through on that one. But let's, let's keep working with the user mode action set. Just drag that back in and I've basically reset it to default. Okay, so, you know, I think I'm going to go through and show you guys the rosettes in a separate video. I just wanted to finish off showing you more of how the interlock buttons work and how to set up some of those layers, creating an underbase. And we're going to maybe go through and show the rosettes separately. So thanks for watching this video and continue on with more as I go through this series and showing you guys the instructions on how to use the Max Chroma Photo Tessellator 2022. Again, that's a $50 product available on my payhip.com slash Max Chroma web store. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.